welcome to the Anglo-Welsh Boat Handover video. This video provides a basic guide to the facilities on board your boat, as well as how to operate the boat safely. Individual boats may vary in layout and onboard features. A fully comprehensive manual is on board, containing an emergency call-out number, together with a copy of the Boater's Handbook. We also have an online video version of the Boater's Handbook video on our website. When entering the boat, climb down the steps into the cabin backwards, like using a ladder. The rear locker holds a buoyancy aid for the helmsman for tunnel cruising and rivers. Extra life jackets are available for the crew. Here at the rear of the boat, you will also find a padlock, a key for opening the water tank, and a key for accessing canal and river truss facilities. The electrical distribution board is also at the back of the boat, as well as an inverter that converts the boat's 240 volt output to provide power for some of the facilities on board. Should the system be overloaded by using too many appliances at the same time, the inverter will cut out. You can refer to the manual for instructions on how to reset. The control for the gas powered central heating is here. Switch it on and give it a little time to get going. Again, check your boat manual, as the system might be slightly different on your boat. Hot water is stored and produced automatically by either the central heating or the engine. You might need to run the engine for a short time each morning to top up the hot water supply. Bed layouts will vary. There are a selection of doubles and singles, and on some boats you can also convert the dining area into a double bed made up by adapting the table and its legs. There are various wardrobes and storage facilities across the boat, as well as doors to provide extra privacy. Your boat will have one or more fully fitted bathrooms. The bathroom also has a fitted shower, which is operated like a normal shower, except the shower tray needs to be emptied by a pump, which you should switch on here when you start your shower. Remember to switch it off again when you have finished. The toilets are similar to those you have at home, but rather than going into a sewer, the waste is stored in a sealed tank. Toilets vary a little, but you usually flush using this foot pedal here. Make sure this returns to avoid using too much water. Some will have a push button on the wall next to the toilet. It's really important not to flush anything down the toilet except lightweight toilet roll. Anything else, including wipes, will cause a blockage in the system and will need an engineer to clear it, which we will charge for. When the wastewater tank becomes nearly full, it will need to be emptied at a special equipped pump out station. This will cost you around 15 to 20 pounds. We can give you guidance on where the pump out stations are so you can plan ahead, or you can use a cruising guide map. The boat has a well equipped galley with everything you need to cook and serve food on board. The sink has running water. We recommend you use eco-friendly washing up liquids as the water from the sink is emptied straight into the canal. To operate the gas hob, push the button down and push the ignition switch. To light the grill and oven, push in the knob down and the ignition switch. If there's no ignition switch, use a lighter or matches provided. The boat engine needs to run for a minimum of five hours a day to keep the fridge power topped up. Boat fridges aren't as efficient as the ones we have at home, so you can't store frozen food and the door will break if you load it up with too much weight. You can store perishable items in the fridge safely for a couple of days. The galley also has a microwave powered by the boat batteries, so it's a good idea to run the boat's engine when you are using these appliances. For your safety, there's a fire extinguisher, fire blanket and a smoke alarm, as well as a carbon monoxide monitor. If the carbon monoxide alarm sounds, contact the boatyard immediately using the emergency number in the manual. There's also a fire extinguisher towards the rear of the boat, as well as one close to the bow of the boat. There's a safety clip here, which you pull and then squeeze a lever. If a small fire breaks out, please try to extinguish it. If the fire is large, get off the boat immediately to a safe place and dial 999 for the fire brigade. The television will need retuning as you move between transmission areas. The signal can be intermittent, especially when you are in rural areas or in cut-ins. And your Wi-Fi speed will depend on your 4G data signal, which is often very poor in remote areas. Some of our boats have multi-fuel stoves. You must ensure the chimney has been fitted and the cover removed before using it, and only use the leaf logs provided.
only the front and rear decks are designated crew areas, so don't travel on the gunnels or roof. Be careful to spread the distribution of people between the decks to avoid the boat tipping. Stored on the roof are the boat pole, boat hook and boarding plank. Use a boat pole to push off from the side of the canal. Don't use it as a lever or push it with your body. Don't use your hands and arms to push off an obstacle or the bank. Don't use the boat hook in this way. It should only be used to retrieve things from the water. You don't often need to use a boarding plank, but take care if you do. There's a life ring on the roof close to the hatch. If you need to use it for someone in the water, throw it towards them, not at them. And turn the engine off first and keep the boat clear of the person in the water. The person who has fallen in should try to stand up firstly as most canals are fairly shallow. After casting off, make sure your front mooring rope is stored tidily on the foredeck so it doesn't get tangled. And remove the rear rope from the bollard and store it out of the way on the roof. Otherwise you could trip over it or it could fall in the water and become tangled around the propeller. In either the bow or the stern of the boat you will find the gas locker. These are connected with at least one regulator. If you run out of gas, turn off the empty bottle and turn on the next gas bottle in the locker by twisting the tap on top of the bottle. Wind it down to close and up to open. If you suspect a leak or can smell gas, don't switch anything electrical on or off. Get everyone off the boat and contact the boatyard using a phone from outside the boat. Mobile phones can create a spark. The water tank is located below the bow deck and is usually opened using a special key which is stored at the back of the boat. The tank should be topped up daily but don't stay moored up at filling points. To refill with water connect the hose to a tap at a water point. Sometimes a canal and river truss key is needed to unlock these points. Also stored in the bow and in the stern are mooring pins, piling hooks, windlasses and mooring fenders. There is also a hammer for driving in the mooring pins into the grass at the side of the towpath in a way that mooring lines don't obstruct the towpath. Piling hooks are a convenient way of attaching mooring ropes to canal side piling where available. Mooring fenders should be hung from the roof rail to cushion the side of the boat when tying up but they must not be left in place when cruising or going through locks as this can be very dangerous. The rear deck contains all the controls for driving the boat. The control panel shows information about the state of the engine and batteries with various gauges and warning lights. The normal running temperature is about 80 degrees centigrade. If the temperature is running above 90 degrees centigrade or the overheat buzzer sounds, other than that start up, pull over and stop the engine. Refer to the manual for instructions. The voltmeter should be in the green sector while the engine is running. If it goes into the red or if the charge warning light comes on, again pull over and refer to the manual. If the oil pressure warning light comes on at any time, follow the same procedure, pull over and check the manual. Press a bilge pump to remove excess water from the engine compartment. Please use this at the end of each day's cruising. Always use a headlight when navigating tunnels. The horn uses to alert other boats, for example, when approaching a tunnel or a blind bend. The control lever is effectively a combined accelerator and gear selector. While the lever is in the upright position, the gear is in neutral. To engage forward gear, push the lever forward and for reverse, push it backwards. The first part of the movement forward will engage the gear without increasing the engine speed. Pushing it further forward will gradually increase your speed. By pushing the central button, or if there's no central button, pulling the handle outwards, the lever can then be pushed forward to rev the engine without engaging gear. Returning the lever to the upright position, the control will be reset, ready for the boat to go into drive. To start the engine, push the central button in, or pull the lever out if there's no button and move the lever forward to about one third throttle. If the engine is cold, turn the key to the heat position and hold it for about 10 seconds. 
turn the key clockwise to the run position, an alarm buzzer will sound and a number of warning lights will come on. This is normal. Turn the key to the start position and hold until the engine fires. Then release the key back to the run position. Don't run the engine starter for more than 20 seconds. Return the throttle lever to the upright position. Push your lever forward to select forward gear. Feel a slight click when it reaches its tick over setting. Push it further forward to increase the speed. And remember not to cruise at more than four miles per hour. Monitor the wash that the boat is creating. If it's breaking against the bank or disturbing more boats, then slow down. To stop the engine, put the throttle upright and turn the key to the off position. If your boat has an Azuzu panel, push the button to stop the engine and then return the key to the zero position. With the Azuzu panel, the key must be left in the one position whilst running, otherwise it may damage the electrical circuits. Steer the boat using the tiller. To turn the boat to the right, you need to pull the tiller to the left. And to turn to the left, you need to pull the tiller to the right. Make sure you stand clear of the tiller swing because if the rudder were to hit something in the water it could swing the tiller around with some force so you want to be well out of the way. Please observe the safety notice displayed at the back of the boat explaining the tiller arc. Make sure when you pass other boats to slow down and move to the right and give way to unpowered craft, for example canoes or paddle boards. Remember to slow down when you pass moored boats. At the end of each day's cruising, you will need to prime the stern greaser, which is usually located next to the weed hatch in the engine compartment below the stern deck. Screw it down until you feel some pressure, then give it an extra half turn. Before you start the next day's cruising, check the engine header tank. This is usually under the rear seat, the rear bulkhead, or on the engine itself. The coolant should be on the halfway mark of the header tank, or if it's on the engine, it should be up near the top. If necessary, top it up with tap water. Only do this without the engine running. If you've had the engine running, let it cool down and use a heavy cloth when opening the cap. Finally, you will need to check the engine oil level by using the engine oil dipstick, which is located on the right-hand side of the engine. The oil should be between the minimum and maximum marks on the dipstick. If the oil level is below that mark, please contact your home base for guidance. Check the weed hatch, which you will find underneath the rear deck, to make sure the propeller is free of any debris. First, make sure the engine is stopped and keep the ignition key in your pocket. Get down into the weed hatch compartment, unscrew the retaining bar and lift out the cover. Check the propeller by hand, but watch out for anything sharp that may have been picked up. Replace the cover and make sure it is correctly positioned and tighten up. To make sure the hatch is securely sealed, start the engine and run it briefly in reverse gear. If it's not secure, water will escape from the top. As with any other contact with canal water, please make sure you wash your hands afterwards. It's unlikely you will need to top up fuel on a short break or a week away. If you're out for 10 days or more, make sure you refuel. If you have any questions, these will be answered at the physical handover. You can also watch the Boaters Handbook video on our website in advance of your trip for further cruising guidance including advice on going through locks. Your boat should never sleep more than its berth size and never more than 12 people are allowed on board at one time. Under 18s should never be left in charge of the boat at any time, especially when steering. When stepping on and off the boat, always keep one hand free in case of tripping. Be considerate of other boaters and waterway users and keep noise levels down. Don't cruise at night and in the event of extreme bad weather, remain moored up and contact your higher boat base. The same rules apply for alcoholers when driving a car. Don't drink and drive when steering a boat. We welcome pets, but please bring their own beds and blankets. Don't let them sleep on the beds and don't leave them unattended on the boat. There are rubbish and recycling bins at weigh stations along the canal. Please bag your rubbish carefully. The red biffa bins are sorted after collection to remove any recyclables. Be careful of strong streams and weirs when cruising on rivers. We recommend you bring a first aid kit and there's some more advice on what to pack on our website. Most of our boats have a USB socket. Please use these for charging your mobile phone if available. If you need to use one of the 240 volt sockets on board, it's best to charge your mobile phone and tablets when the boat is running and don't leave phones charging unattended. Thank you for watching and have a great holiday.